So we've had exams throughout most of the year. <laughs> it's sad, yeah. but it's true. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing a video, a follow-up video from a video we did a while ago. We did a video explaining the first three years of medicine at Cambridge University. And in this video, we're going to do a follow-up of that video covering the clinical years uh, at the university. So the clinical course for medicine at the University of Cambridge is a three-year course, uh, and it focuses on core medicine and surgery and also mm -hmm. specialties. So the main specialties that we do placements in are paediatrics, obs and gynae, psychiatry, uh, and neurology and neurosurgery. Yeah. So for these placements, your base will be in Cambridge at Ambrose Hospital, but you will also go into the regional hospitals, and these are known as District General Hospitals, or GGHs yeah. as we call them. Kiwi Garden is going to tell you about those, the ones that we go to. Yeah, so they're separate into three hubs. So the northern hub has Peterborough, Kings Lane and Hitchinbrook. And the eastern hub has Ipswich, Bury St Edmunds. And finally, the southern hub has Bedford and Stevenage. Okay, so we'll start with fourth year, which is the first year of clinical medicine at Cambridge. Uh, in this year, basically it's an introductory year because you haven't done mm -hmm. clinical medicine before this. So we'll talk through the uh, placements and the examinations. So you start off with the introductory course, which essentially introduces you to clinical examinations, how to take histories, and basically introduces you to the course at large. From that point onwards, you go into your core clinical method, which is essentially an introduction to the ward life, you know, getting used to actually seeing patients, seeing what doctors do and shadowing a lot of doctors um, in the placement. So that course is spread over so two places, so Adam Brooks and your uh, assigned DGH. Okay, so within this placement, you also do GP days, which introduce you to life as a GP, managing patients in the community. Um, in, year, in fourth year, you don't, a lot of GPs won't let you see patients on, on your own. Mm -hmm. They tend to shadow and tend to observe you seeing patients, which is a good way of introducing you to yeah. seeing patients on your own. So all of those placements are before Christmas. After Christmas, you do core medicine. Basically, you increase your confidence being on the wards, knowing the lingo, basically, seeing patients, if you like. Um, after that, you do surgery. In surgery, you basically observe operations. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of introduction to anesthetics, which I found really interesting. Within surgery, you spend quite a lot of time in outpatient clinics as well, which is a big part of surgery, like follow-up patients or mm -hmm. clacking in new patients for elective operations. Mm -hmm. After that, you also have a dedicated GP block where you sort of increase your confidence seeing patients. You might start seeing patients on your own, mm -hmm. report, reporting to your supervising GP and discussing management with them, which is an excellent learning opportunity. You also do emergency medicine, mm -hmm. uh, which is split into two. So you spend time in the ED. You also spend time in acute assessment units seeing how they differ, seeing how they work together basically, and you also see patients um, and discuss with doctors there. So the placements that you'll have in year four is you will have an SSC block. So this is essentially a student selected component. It's a six week placement and you get to choose the specialty um, and the topic in which you do some work or yeah. research in. So some people can choose for this just to be another clinical um, placement but we both chose to do research and we both got a publication out of it. So it's a really good way to kind of get involved in research and see what kind of research you might want to do in the future as well. Exactly, yeah. Another type of placement that we have is something called an R&I week. This stands for Review and Integration. Essentially, all of the year comes back together and we have uh, lectures delivered and it essentially consolidates the level of the knowledge that you should be at. Yeah. Um, and it makes sure that there's kind of a universal level of teaching for everyone in the year, despite where you might be on placement. So that's all of the placements that you'll have in fourth year and now on to the exams. In the clinical course we have two types of exams, so we have formative and summative. And essentially what this means is formative is a bit like a mock, it doesn't contribute yeah. towards your final grade or your doctor exams, but what it does is it helps you to identify areas that you need to work on. So we have a formative um, written paper which is a single best answer. So you'll be presented with a clinical vignette and you'll be given five options and it might be a diagnosis, investigations mm -hmm. or treatment type question and you'll have that at the end of your core clinical method. This might be in the December or the January depending on where Christmas falls yeah. for the number of weeks for our placements. Uh, onto some of the assessments, so these are actual exams, they are pass or fail, mm -hmm. they contribute towards you becoming a doctor. So we have, um, at the end of year four, a written paper, and once again, this is a single best answer, like the formative. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have an OSCE, so there'll be around 10 to 12 stations, and it'll be history taking, examinations, um, and also some radiology. Yep. So that is essentially all of year four. It runs from September to July, so it's the longest year you'll do in Cambridge up yeah. until that point. It's but so it, long. <laughs> it, it feels very long. 
um, but it is also very enjoyable and just to add you do get breaks so you tend to get a few weeks off at Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. So on year five now so this runs from the August through the following June and this is the specialist year. Like year four you have two blocks where you can essentially choose what you do they're called student selected placements or SSPs for short and you'll do one in medicine and one in surgery. It's a little bit more structured in terms of the specialties that you can choose from yeah. and I chose in this year to have more of a clinical focus than research as I was still doing research on my SSC block. I did the same, I was still writing my SSC. And during these blocks you also get some exposure to things like oncology, cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery. We're very fortunate to be so near to Papworth Hospital and you also get to spend some time in infectious diseases. Other specialties that you get to do during year five is you have a maternal and child health block. And this is essentially a paediatrics and open guide placement. And we also have a video on the channel of Kubik Arnie while he was on this placement a day in the life that you should go and check out. Yep. In year five, you continue with GP. So you have more GP placements. So you have six to eight weeks spread across the year and you get more independence, you're seeing patients and you get yeah. more chance to review and discuss with the GPs. And I think of all the placements in year five, this is the one. I really started to find my confidence and you know, build on the general medicine and surgery that I'd seen simply because you spend so much time doing specialties that it's it's important not to, to lose focus with the general stuff as well. Yeah, my GP was very good at like asking us to come up with a management plan mm. before we ask him what to do, so yeah. which was really good. So other placements you also do are neurosciences and psychiatry. So in neurosciences you do neurology and neurosurgery. I was based at Adam Brooks Hospital um, our psychiatry, you also do inpatient as well as uh, community psychiatry, so you get to see the difference between the two. We also have a video on the day in the life uh, while I was in psychiatry, so you should go and check that out. We'll link it in a card somewhere. For the neurology and neurosurgery, I do have a day in the life of that as well. Yeah. You know, I did, I did do these placements. <laughs> um, so we have that. So the RNI weeks we mentioned earlier continue throughout year five, year five as well. They just consolidate everything you should be seeing and they put everyone on the same level ground in terms of knowledge, core clinical knowledge. And also in year five, they're structured kind of after every placement. Yeah. So it, everyone comes together after each six to eight week block and you know, it, it's a really useful way to catch up and... Exactly. Yeah. So those are all the placements onto exams now. So in year five, you have a formative exam after your neurosciences and psychiatry placement. Um, it's a formative exam, but you have to pass it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but everyone tends to pass it. So in year five, there's a few more things you can consider formative. So every placement, you tend to have things to get signed off, um, tasks to complete. Once you do those, you can get signed off on your placement and then you move on to the next one. I think they're actually really helpful. So at the time, I kind of begrudged them because you're like, oh, I've got X, Y, and Z to do. Yeah. But I think it's really helpful, especially when you're doing some quite niche areas of medicine yeah. and surgery that you your guide you kind of as to what you should be doing, what you should be seeing yeah. uh, and what you should be aiming to have exposure to. So I think overall they are really helpful yeah. and I think essentially because there are so many of us they have to make sure that we are all getting the opportunities we should be. For example for obstetrics and gynae and peds you have to do things like baby checks and mm -hmm. developmental assessments. Those things come up in the exams so it's quite useful to have yeah. had it done properly beforehand. So for year 5 summative exams you've got three main exams. You have an SAQ which is a short answer question paper which covers general surgery, medicine, and uh, some pathology, and all the specialties you've done uh, throughout the year. You have an SBA similar to year four, which covers similar areas as well. And then there's the year five OSCEs, which are divided into two. You have the Obzengaini OSCE and the Pediatrics OSCE. So in between years five and six, we have our medical elective. This is a seven week placement, and you can choose to do it in any specialty in any country in the world that you choose. It takes a lot of organization and planning you know, if you want to go somewhere that's a bit competitive like Cape Town, you have to be really prepared yeah. and apply well in advance. But I can honestly say that this is the best placement I've ever had in medical school. It's a highlight of the past six exactly. years without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, if you are interested to see more of the experience that we got while we are in Cape Town for our elective, then do make sure to check out some of our videos. Yeah. It was fantastic. Best. Yeah. <laughs> And another thing to add actually about the electives is that in Cambridge, they are very helpful in terms of prompting you to start applying and thinking about it early. Yeah. And also they do have pages on our um, online portal that kind of direct you to bursaries that might be available to you depending on what you're going on, what you're doing for your elective. Yeah. Uh, so there is financial aid available. So on to sixth year, which is the final year of medicine and final year at Cambridge. So in sixth year, you start getting called uh, a senior medical student. So you get a new badge mm -hmm. and all your rotations are called senior X. So you do senior medicine, senior surgery, senior GP, senior acute, which includes more anesthetics and also time in the ED. 
um, your RNA weeks continue throughout as well, just consolidating everything, making sure everyone is on the same page. So throughout all these CNAC placements, you start to get a lot more responsibility in terms of seeing your own patients, uh, discussing management with doctors who are supervising you. Yeah. Basically, they're trying to get you to that F1 level. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot more responsibility and it's a lot more fun, actually. Yeah, definitely. And I think probably the main focus of final year is actually exams. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had exams throughout most of the year. <laughs> It's sad, yeah. but it's true. Um, so in final year, you have your written finals in December. This is a short answer question paper again, but this time it is on ethics and law and public health. Mm -hmm. And we also have two SBA, so single best answer papers on all of medicine and surgery. Medicine. So we do that in December. And then in April, May time, we have our clinical finals. And this is essentially histories, examinations on skin, but they up the game in, in the finals. Level. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, it's been a pretty intense year in terms of exams, yeah. but also it's very nice for us to get our written finals out of the way because then you can focus more on the clinical component yeah. of medicine after. And just to add that we, in addition to this, you also have your SJT. So this is the situational judgment test that you do in order to apply for the foundation program. And we actually had this the week before or in finals, yeah. which was quite well timed. Interesting yeah. dynamics there. Uh, but we are going to have a video going up, kind of talking you through and our tips for the SGT. Yeah. And after all these exams are finished, we do our final clinical placement as medical students, which is the apprenticeship. So yeah, the final placement is the apprenticeship block, which is six weeks and you've done all your exams. You're attached to an F1 and you shadow them throughout, seeing how they do the job and they show you tips and tricks of how to make your life easier when you start as an F1. And as the placement goes, as you grow in confidence, you can start sort of to do more jobs on your own, questing investigations, maybe speaking to other specialties on their behalf, mm -hmm. like that sort of thing, yeah. which is very exciting actually. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was just useful because obviously you've done the exams, now mm -hmm. you need to know how to actually do the job. Yeah, probably one of our best placements we've had. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you've enjoyed that overview of our clinical uh, years at Cambridge. If you have any questions, leave them down below and we'll see you guys in the next one.